people, and happy Tuesday, everyone. We're back. Episode number 029 of the Open Heart Collective. My guest tonight, you guys might recognize him. We tried this really, really early on in the Open Heart Collective uh, show, but we're going to try it again because it's been too long and this guy's got a lot of important stuff to say. Do so, I? Without, without any further ado, yes, of course you do. Without any further ado, my guest uh, tonight is my friend, Matt Davis. That being said, Matt, I want you to introduce yourself and let the people know who you are. Sure. Well, I want to point out that my daughter just joined, which semi freaked me out. Hey, Emma. <laughs> um, I don't know where this is going to go, but um, she's, uh, hey, I'm Spartan Podcast. They also joined. Oh, look, people I know are joining. Not just your right. friends. Um, I'm sorry. What was the question? I was so distracted when I saw my daughter. Introduce name. yourself, brother. Uh, hey, everybody, Mappy Davis. What would you What would you like to know? Which Which uh, version of myself would you All, like to know? See that. See that's a good, fun part about this show is that because we're focusing really heavily on our story. So I want to know your story. I want to know who you are, what you're up to. And then as we move through this conversation, for those of you guys who aren't aware, that the show is really heavily focused around mental health. So I've taken it a couple of steps more than just talking about the struggle because everybody can talk about the struggle. Everybody can talk about depression, anxiety, suicide, but I wanna talk about how Matt in particular has gotten, has gone through what he's gone through and then has gone out of it to build what he's built now. So it's struggle. It's obstacles. How did you get through the obstacles and where are you in, where are you now? So funny you should mention obstacles. Um, <laughs> so, um, that was slightly intentional, but not really. <laughs> so by the way, I mentioned to you before we went on air that I'm, I'm still coming down from my run and still sweating. And then I put uh, lots of hot sauce on my food. So I'm like going to constantly be wiping my face like <laughs> – the worst thing you should do before you go on a show. Well, is it's it's fine. I'm always drinking water and stuff on mine. Be hot and then put hot sauce on things. So, oh geez, Ryan Woodsy's here. Another buddy. Of mine. So happy. All my buddies are all my joining. Hey, Patrick Hansel. So, <clears throat> you know, in, in in sort of that scope, I'd say that uh, I'm someone that uh, was always on the the way my wife says it. Sort of always ran hot, right? Uh, right. I'm very outgoing. I'm very uh, risk taker. Uh, just that's what comes naturally to me. Not play by the rules. Doesn't really do well with a boss. Like all that stuff. Doesn't play well with others. I, I can play well with others. It's just not so good with authority, maybe. And uh, I'm someone that you know, semi late in life. I feel like found that. I'm probably somebody that should only work for myself and um, do things in a very, I think, was sort of one track way, like my way or the highway. And there's a lot of good that 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 comes from that. Um, can you hear me okay? This guy just said I sound like I'm being suffocated under a pillow. Can you hear me fine? Maybe it's him. You're a little muted on Instagram, but that could is that because the volume is so low on the on my phone? Do you think? No. All right. Well, they just said. So well, they just need to turn the volume up on their phone. Yeah, turn the volume on your damn phone. Better headphones. So in the last five years is when I would say, um, man, I'm having a really time, hard, hard time answering this question. Can we start over? Can you ask me yes. that question in a different Matt, way? introduce yourself. <laughs> I want to know who you are, where you come from, what you do. And then from there, I want to dive deeper into your story. Okay, sure. So uh, I'm a husband. I'm a dad of three kids. I'm a business owner. I'm someone that uh, likes to run a lot. About six years ago, I started a company about obstacle racing, which for those that don't know, if you've ever done a Spartan or a Tough Mudder or a Warrior Dash, I decided six years ago that I would start talking about that and it turns out that um, I found sort of what I think has been my calling all along, which is this thing that a lot of people do now called content creator, right? I hate using trite terms, R but that's what I'm trying to RJ for. wants to know your uh, middle name. Yeah, he can't know my middle name. It's a trade secret. Um, 
RJ. That's what I'm I go by. I go by my middle name. So that that I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start calling you RJ. By the way, uh, Bilbo. Yes, it's Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> so that that's the middle name, Bilbo Baggins, right? Right. So uh, someone that found it's sort of you know a long way around, which we can perhaps get into. Figured out that this we is have about- an hour. Awesome. Uh, I like. I like talking to people. I like, again, I try to avoid like this term, like people always say they like telling stories, but it turns out that's what I like doing. And it's just what I'm naturally gifted at the people that not everybody can do. And I've spent the last six years trying to maximize that and trying to, you know, constantly doing the entrepreneur struggle of how do I uh, get people to pay me to do that? Since people say, hey, I really like that thing you did on the Facebook the other day, right? On the Facebook. (laughs) Yeah, I I know, I get it. So uh, that's that's who I am. Man, am I sweating? <laughs> Tip, trick, ladies and gentlemen, don't run, and then put a hot sauce on food, and then appear on the live video. Now, for those of you who, after the fact, will be hearing this or watching it on YouTube when it goes on YouTube on Sunday, the ones hearing it on the audio version of the podcast won't get to see him sweating profusely and then wiping his face. But I can assure you, it's highly entertaining. And if you missed it, go and watch um, Go and watch the video. Trust me, it'll be entertaining. Your Anyways. Face, your face is very red. Do you get a lot of sun? I, I am constantly out in the sun, but I also have this incredibly bright light like shining directly at me because otherwise the lighting in this room is atrocious at this time of day. So, just saying. And and you have a little camera above your computer? No, I'm using I'm using the computer camera, and then I've got the phone over here. I've got quite the setup. I'm telling you. Do you put a sticker over your camera when you're not on it? No. Neither do people do that. I think it's weird. <laughs> okay, we're we're getting a little bit off of subject, but anyways, so you 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 gave us your kind of what you're doing right now, where you came from a little bit, but. I want to know what was, what did you go, what, because we talked about this briefly before the last episode got jacked on the fact that you've had to face a lot of struggles in your lifetime. What can you, can, can we talk a little bit about that? And, and because I I, contextually, it, it fits for the subject matter. It fits for what we're all talking about this month it really heavily fits with the entire ethos of the show. So there's nothing like being alive and raw and real. That sounded bad, but don't take it that way. Anyways, let's go. You mean like when sort of the struggle sort of began for me? Yeah, like let's go early. I mean, I I suffered in my own story, which a lot of you guys have heard. I, I suffered with mine really early. I was about... 13 to about 18 and my last suicide attempt was at 17 which is 17 years ago for me but i mean even now i still struggle with certain things so well i think like i think like most of us i don't know i don't want to speak for everybody i certainly i was certainly as a kid had that i don't belong in any one of these groups right so there was the jock and there was the smart kids and there was the goths, which I think they call something else now. We actually called them freaks back then, which is really not nice. Um, so you'll have someone, you'll have some, you'll have a future guest on this show who was like they called me freak in high school. Um, I was, I was the I, freak, but I definitely didn't fit in any of those. Uh, and then I found, uh, you know, drugs and alcohol, which were great because. You know, I could like all of a sudden I could talk like literally I could talk to this girl at the football game that I could not talk to in class. And I distinctly remember thinking like, this is amazing. Right. I can totally talk to this girl now. I'm not nervous. I'm not completely in my head. And then I went back to school on Monday and I couldn't I was back to terrified. And I, you know, so, you know, looking back on it now, so uncomfortable in my own skin and, you know, with, with having my kids now, 
you know, I think like, what would I have wanted? Like for someone to try to maybe talk to me about it because they can't, right? So like I have an 11 year old son, I have a nine year old son. He's got his own like issues already. He's on meds. And it's like, he can't describe what that is because you're just sort of trapped in this little mind in this little body. And I knew that when I drank and got high, I didn't think about that stuff. And it was really, really fun. Um, as they say, until it wasn't. And for me, that came like 10 years later. Uh, <laughs> don't you love when people have their business name as their, as their Instagram? Welcome North Georgia Spine Center. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Um, for me, uh, I moved to LA to become uh, rich and famous. Um, I always say- you want say, to be a rock star? Uh, no, I did stand up. Oh yeah, uh, I, have no, I have no musical, I have no musical talent whatsoever. Uh, and again, like LA, I presumed, I presumed musician, right? You know, yeah. that being in the music industry and everything, right? As my uh, as my kids will tell you, I'm the worst singer like ever. Like they are, very, Daddy, please don't sing. I, I bet your daughter, if she's still watching, can attest to that. She's she's not, thankfully. She, I don't think she's still watching. Um, so. Uh, I got sober when I was 27, and so life kind of got better, uh, a little bit better right away, but I still like couldn't like balance a checkbook or keep a girlfriend or those kind of things, and you know now I'm sober, so uh, that's not the problem. It turns out that I'm the problem, and uh, you know they say, you know, I do the 12-step thing, and they say, you know, it's an inside job, so the last like 20 years has been that right so mm -hmm. i've read a lot of books i've gone to a lot of seminars i've you know um i've done the 12-step thing and you know it's like they say uh you're ready when you're ready right so some lessons were probably told to me when i was 17 or 27 but i wasn't ready to accept them until i was 43 right and then a year and a half ago um I, like I said, I kind of had always run sort of hot as my as my wife's just somebody that just kind of like um, right. I was, you know, in hindsight, looking back, I was getting up really early, getting a lot done. Right. Oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm creating so much amazing shit, um, which I now know was this manic phase. And right. uh, the crash that followed was something I'd never felt like the terms anxiety and depression get thrown around a lot. I'm depressed, right? Or I'm anxious. And I had what I would call sort of, what do you call that? Ground level. Border, borderline. Well, it's just like street level. Like, like anxiety is like, oh shit, I gotta pay the rent. I know that check's coming, but it's not quite coming fast enough. That's like a little, a little anxiety. But the kind that keeps one in bed and the, the kind that, that, um, kept me in bed and like taking a shower is now scary. And, uh, you know, it's like, am I depressed? Cause I'm so anxious or my anxious. I'm so depressed. Like whatever it was, it hit me like, like I got, you know, I got knocked out by it. Right. And it was time to, uh, wake up. And, uh, it turns out that I was, uh, diagnosed, uh, bipolar, which they used to call manic depressant. They don't use it anymore for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and uh, you know, I uh, I got some help. I I did an outpatient thing for six weeks, and um, ever since then, it's like I think the one of the biggest things I say about it is it gave me compassion, and I'm someone that could have used a big dose of compassion, right? Like if you told me you were, if you told me you were depressed, I'd be like, well, maybe you want to get over that fucking sad sack because you know what I mean. Like the shit to do, right? Right. And uh, you know, I've learned what it means to uh, get your dick knocked in the dirt, as we say. Are you my allowed to curse on here? Absolutely. You are. <laughs> That's that why all of the audio message or uh, the audio version has the explicit warning because. And this is why we get we get down deep into the story we're talking about mental health we're we're, we're for we're being real right we're, we're not hiding by filters in production we're being it's a live video we're sometimes now if, if you start dropping the f-bomb every 10 seconds i'm gonna get a little bit like eh, because then it's not genuine but if it fits in the moment go for it right 
Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. <laughs> So you, you, you said a lot there. Um, thank you for that though. Um, because it, it helped give me context and I needed that because there's a lot of similarities in feeling like you don't belong and, and that addressing the youth that watches the show and listens to this show to the, all right, I'm out of school, but now I'm partying too much, which addresses that middle kind of late or late teens, early twenties. And then you get into the, well, shit, now what moment, which is most of us late twenties and 30 year olds that are like, fuck, I got to do something. And it was weird because you said it was at age 27 for you, right? Well, that's when I, that's when I realized that, um, like I, I feel pretty like lucky or fortunate. My, so my dad who, Oh, well, my parents divorced when I was two. Forgot to say that. Um, it's like so, like assumed, but like you know, again, mine like, at thirteen. So yeah, right. So uh, you know, my dad, um, my dad's sober a long time now, but he wasn't a very good. Like I don't think my dad changed a fucking diaper. You know what I mean? Like, right. and like looking back, this thought I had once I had my own kids was like, I don't think either of my parents are good with children, which is like ironic, right? They had four kids. Right. They, my mother does not, uh, sorry, mom, who's not listening, but my mom does not like do well, like with my kids, right? Cause she just doesn't really like children. I don't think. Whereas my wife's parents are awesome. They're like the perfect grandparents. They're like right. amazing. They visit. They're like, what can we do for you? My mother's like, you know, what can you do for her? Right. right. So I don't want to spend the show being the whole like victim of my mom thing. Um, but, uh, Oh man, where was I? Fix some of your mom thing. No, before that, when I said, <laughs> uh, parents because, divorced it too. Yeah, so it turns out that's really bad for kids, right? It's really fucking bad when a uh -huh. two year old goes, where the fuck is my dad? That's really bad. It really affects. And I think that, that that's been one of the hardcore, I don't want to repeat that mistake of parents thing, which everybody says. And then some of us right. succeed it and some of us don't. It just happens. Right. How many kids do you have? Two. Okay. Yep. And how old are they? Nine and seven. Okay. So totally, right? So mine are 11, nine, and we were about to turn five. So yeah, so you know the deal. Mm -hmm. Does your daughter Does your daughter watch your YouTube videos? She doesn't, is not allowed to watch my YouTube videos. <laughs> She's only seven though. So, no. Does she, she have a cell phone? Device. No. Does she have an iPad? She has a tablet, but it's like six years old. That's that's our that's our house totally. You're like you can have the fucking ridiculously old thing that doesn't do very much. I, I we bought we bought them the the watch phone that has like four numbers and they can only dial out and take calls in. It. That's it. So that's their only connection to the outside world. I mean, they have tablets, but it's no social or anything like that on there. Because I mean, that that's something I'm not ready to expose them to yet. I hear you, but um, so <clears throat> talking about, I'm still hearing myself as an echo. It's weird. It's okay. Um. So when you were going, especially that partying phase, now I wasn't a huge partier, so that's not that's not something that I do know much other than drinking, um, which I mean- You're in the music biz and you, you don't party much or you haven't partied much? I mean, I never used to and I still really don't. I mean, it was more about the music than it was about the, everything else. So- um, and plus, I mean, too many, I lost too many people to an OD, to overdoses when I was going through high school. So it wasn't really about to live that life. Right. Well, some of us like see that and go, I'm not going to do that. And some people are like, well, I'm not that bad. I'm not that guy. You know what I mean? Like I was like, I specifically looking back, all of my friends drank more than I did. 
And like, I look back and that probably wasn't an accident. Cause I didn't want to be the guy. I didn't want to be the guy. Oh, I didn't want to be the guy that uh, I didn't want to be the guy that was like, Oh, we can't fucking hang out with that dude. <laughs> right. But then it's like, what do you, what are you willing to put yourself through to get that acceptance? Because that, that all stems back to what you said before when you were growing up and you didn't feel like you belonged. And now you're, and then when you hit that later, it's like, all right, now I, in order to not be that guy that I was back then, I'm going to do this because that way, then at least I fit in. Yeah. And I don't think any of that was conscious. I just think this was the plan like, that I was A lot on. of this is subconscious though. Right. I think it was, I mean, just, I think it was just, I don't want to feel like I feel being in this brain is, does not fun and uh, life kind of sucks and let's check out. And how can I check out? Well, I can check out with booze and then later, you know, uh, girls, right. That's like another right. easy way to check out is like, well, let me just try to go out and, you know, drown myself in, you know, other people. Right. So what would you say was your darkest moment? I would say that uh, in um, – really hope my daughter's not watching now. I would say in uh, early sobriety that, you know, talking about um, – talking about, you know, hooking up was like when that didn't work, like I did like the prostitute thing and, you know – that's another like really nasty addiction that takes that like took me to some pretty bad places. And I like, like, this is like sober. This is like, you know, I don't have, I don't have that excuse anymore. And uh, spending the like little money I had, like trying to pick people up right, like on the street. I don't think I've ever said that out loud, by the way, like, other than in 12 step rooms, I don't think I've ever said that. I know I haven't ever said that like on a podcast or anything. So, well, the, the, this is, uh, I want, I want to say something to, to that effect to anybody watching or listening to this after the fact or live with us here right now, this, <laughs> I love how people are yelling at you to speak up on Instagram. Um, the entire purpose of this show, the entire purpose of this community, this collective of incredible people is to share stories and create safe places. Because when we can create safe places and allow ourselves to be vulnerable and allow others to be vulnerable, that's how we change the stigma around mental health. That's how we allow this that that that's how suicide stops ladies and gentlemen and i'm not just saying that for ratings i'm not saying that for any other reason than if we create safe places and allow ourselves to uh, ourselves and others to be vulnerable and speak the truth no matter what is going on that's what we need to do to make this world a better place so all right now that i'm off of that you have a safe place here, brother. It's, Thank dude, you for it's, sharing it's, that. Dude, I'm, it's like super scary. Like, cause I'm someone that's kind of out there and even talking about, um, Brett, just fucking turn your phone up, dude. Um, because I can hear him just fine. It's a little quiet, but I can hear him just fine. Right. Um, well they can hear it later on the podcast and I know he'll listen cause he's a good friend of mine. Um, right. Um, just coming out, coming out about the depression stuff was, was kind of a big deal, but a lot easier to talk about than this. And yeah, dude, it's, it's scary. And I'm like, I'm someone that's, that's doesn't feel this way too well. Like I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I'll say fucking whatever. So yeah, man. It's like, uh, I want to share something because I don't know how many people actually caught it Friday. Really late night Friday. Ooh, that got loud. Um, really late night on Friday. After 
having heard about Mac Miller, um, not, I mean, it was an overdose, but not really that he committed suicide, but still kind of in the same mental health space. I was, I was distraught. I mean, I grew up no, I mean, I'm a lot, I'm eight years older than he is, but like, I still admired him and his music and what he did in creating connections and relationships with people as well as telling, telling stories. So I went live on Instagram for two hours and I shared probably some of the most dark stuff about myself I've ever shared because it was, I'm literally tired of waking up in the morning or opening Facebook after meeting people losing people. I'm tired of it. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want your kids growing up with it. I don't want my kids growing up with it. I don't want anybody else's kids growing up with it. Especially considering the fact that it can be it can be changed. All it takes is us and a little bit of work. But anyways, back off the high horse now. <laughs> but it, it, it it's – so let, let's talk about the depression stuff. I mean, you shared that that was – actually, I want to spend another moment on that. You just shared, like, how did you transition yourself from that behavior to no longer doing that behavior? Because I, I, I think that's a really important – piece for people who may be struggling with the same thing or have struggled with similar addictions that if they can understand how somebody else pivoted out that they might be able to pivot out too. Yeah. So I, you know, there, there are, uh, whoa, look what I just got. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that. I've never um, had that happen on my phone before, other than like being in my car. Like Instagram, my friends, um, head over to Facebook right now and check out the remaining part of this video because Matt's phone literally just overheated, which it might have been re the reason why we're causing all of the audio issues. Right, that would make just sense. Thinking. Um, Did you? So, yeah, um, Matt. So where, where you got to tell them where to go on Facebook though. So if you go right now, guys, if you're watching this and you want to check out the remainder of the of the episode on Facebook, go into my profile, click into my link or click into my uh, link tree, find my Facebook page. It'll be the top video. Just join it right now. We're live and we'll be going for about another half hour over there. So to the everybody who did tune in on Instagram, I, I do want to say a special amount of thanks because I mean, you took a half hour out of your night to join us. And uh, I really want you to see the other part. So please head over to Instagram or Facebook right now and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks guys. Well, you know what? At least we have a little bit of it. All right, so back to Facebook. <laughs> Maybe. Matt, are you good, bud? Don't tell me your computer overheated. Wouldn't be the first time. All right. Well, I can't see Matt. Or I can see Matt. Excuse me, but I cannot hear him. So Matt, if you can hear me, hit the little green toggle switch on your screen, toggle it off, and then come back. Because that's weird. All right, so I'm assuming Matt heard that, so he'll be back. While Matt is taking a brief rest <laughs> from this video, I wanted to say, uh, again, a uh, sincere amount of thanks to everybody who does continue to watch this series. It means the world to me because I know there's a lot more There's a lot more things you could be doing with your time than watching this, but the fact that you guys do watch it means that you want to see change in the world around mental health. You guys tell me in this that you want to 
that you want the stigma to be broken, that you want to have a safe place and communities around creating safe spaces and sharing stories and telling people how it really is. Because this world that we live in is a world that is heavily programmed, heavily produced, and oftentimes leaves people more struggling or struggling more than if they were dealing with it all on their own. So let's do this together, guys, because that's what it takes. Now, that being said, Matt, I do believe you're back. I am back. That was strange. Although not the first time that's happened. Yeah, I just, it, my internet stopped. So I just connected it to the phone, which is now back working. Go back to Instagram or do you want to not risk that? Because I, I tried to get a risk Instagram and it said you stopped. Well, I ended it because I was telling, trying to get people to go over to the other one. Okay, so we can just stay here in the Facebook? Yeah, we'll stay here. Okay. There's no sense in trying to like so you were around. Sure. So you were asking me how I got out of it. And, you know, there, there, there are 12-step programs for pretty much everything. And I'd say that's a big part of it. And, um, you know, I continue to struggle – you know, when I stopped doing super dangerous things like uh, picking people in the street, there was still there was still and always internet porn, and I struggled with that forever. And I think like every guy I've ever talked to struggles with that massively. And uh, and I don't think it's just men. Probably, um, I just knows you know I, I don't. Guys are just a little bit more vocal. About it. Let's just be honest about that. Well, and I just don't like I don't have any like really gal pal. So I just don't talk to them about it. I talk right. to dudes and, um, hang, I'm going to turn the fan on. Hang on one second. Cause I feel super awkward doing this. And, like my kids are possibly in the other room. So hang on one second. All right. So while Matt's turning on his fan, I want to, um, let you guys know that we are working on something really, really spectacular. We're creating this, what I like to, what I'm calling a global resource list for all things, mental health. Matt, you're really going to like this. So for those of you guys who are struggling with addiction, mental health, any issues of the mind and you're struggling finding a way out, you're struggling finding that help that you need, because let's face it, when you're anxious, when you're depressed, when you're suicidal, when you're struggling with alcoholism, when you're struggling with anorexia and bulimia, the last place in the world you want to go to is Google. Because <laughs> what does... Because what happens? You type in, I'm struggling with dot, 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 and woof, information comes hurtling at you at mock speed. Correct. And that oftentimes forces you to not act, which is right. a problem. Right. So how do we fix the problem? We make resources readily available within two to three clicks, regardless of where you are in the world. That is what we're working on developing. Its plan is to roll out in uh, January of 2019. As you can imagine, compiling a global resource list of all things mental health is a bit time consuming. So what I would be curious to know about you got from you guys is how would you want this how would you want this to be made available to you? You could do it in a website, easy. Right, we're gonna do a simple PDF document. It'll probably be hundreds of pages long. Maybe but you can use the find. You can use the find feature, right? Right for PDFs. Right. Or now this one might delay the deployment of it, which I don't really want to do. Or we can look at building an app, where regardless of where you are in the world, you type in "I'm in" and "I'm struggling with," and you get directed right to a resource that's available to you locally where you are. That's phase two of the Open Heart Collective. Yeah, I think an app is, I think a website would be a great place to start and then perhaps an app down right. the line. Anyways, you're back, your fan is on. <laughs> Let's talk about getting out of the darkness. Right, so, um, so that's a big one that I've gone like, you know, in and out of for years. And, you know, for me, like when we talk about the mental health stuff, dude, it's all of it. It's, it's I, I just, it's like, it's all a big stew, right? So mm -hmm. 
if I'm waking up every morning and doing gratitude list, I'm X percent better. If I'm running every day, I'm X percent better. If I'm doing yoga, I'm X percent better. If I'm reaching out and talking to other people, I'm X percent better, right? If I'm going to meetings, I'm X percent better. So it's like, it's all, and I'm never doing all of it at once and I'm never perfect, um, but there are certain things that, um, that make it so that in, you know, in the, in the, in the, you know, the 12 step world for, for, for people who struggle with sexual addiction, it's what they call outer circle behavior. So the inner circle is here's all the things I'm struggling with, you know, flirting, intrigue, you know, internet porn. And then the, what are the things that keep me away from that? And for some people it's going for a walk. Some people it's, um, whatever their thing is, you know, for me, it's, it's work for us. Been, well, some people it's right. Just getting into work. But for me, Running is a apps like running is absolutely for me where it's at, um, and it's not even like I have this like amazing tranquil experience in the forest. Like I just run in my neighborhood for 40, 50 minutes. I sweated my mm -hmm. face off. I listened to uh, the podcast, and like I'm good. You know what I mean? Like I just like well, today was the RFK tapes. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, you know, you thought the JFK experience, JFK conspiracy was one thing. Um, Dr. Death, this is another one I'm listening to, super good. Um, but anyway, that's my jam. And I don't, you know, there's the scientific reasons like the endorphins and whatever. And then there's just, I just know it makes me feel good, so I do it, right? And if Amen. I don't do it for two, and if I don't do it for two or three days, I can tell. I'm a little bit edgier, right? Like, hey man, I need to go out and run. That some, that's really for some cool. people. It's, for some people, it's pushing weight, right? Because they love right. they. I hate that shit. But a lot of people hate running, <laughs> and they're fucking gym rats, and they want to fucking right. Whatever. See, works I, for you, I, I'm the best of both of those worlds, my friend. Because it it, it was odd um, how I kind of came on this little personal mission of mine. I don't know if you've seen me post about it yet or not, but. Um, Back in July, my wife and I had come back from a wedding and or we're at a wedding in Montana and I saw photos of myself. And I'm like, wait a second. That's not me. I don't look like that. Now, I wasn't big. I was like a solid, like maybe 235. But when you're six foot two, you're a big dude. Anyways, and then I was in South Carolina speaking at a, at a social media conference. And I'm like, God, I just don't feel like me, right? I've, I've succumbed to everything, work, relationships, kids. I put everything else above me. So I said, all right, I got back from South Carolina. I'm like, I'm gonna get back in shape. But not just shape physically, because that's just one part of it. Like you were talking about, you can do all these other things and it's a piece of the greater puzzle. Right. So I said, all right, I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna, I created this thing that I call Mission 35. I'm getting ready to turn 35 at the end of next month. And I said, my objective, it's simple. Strive towards being in the greatest shape of my life, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And put in the work on all of those avenues. Because whenever, when I can get the, to be that for me, then I know that every move that I make, every decision that I undertake, everything that I do is going to be coming from the best version of me rather than this subdued, subversion, sub, sub, sub select of the best version of me. And so last month I ran 50 miles. I've never done that before in my life. That's awesome. I had shin splints. It was painful. Like, awful but i felt amazing and then i added weights to it and then while i was on my run i would i, I would do this thing where after the first mile i would drop and do 10 push-ups after the second mile i'd do 20 after the third mile i'd do 30 and 40 and four four for 40 you you guys get the gist. so a four mile run would equal 100 push-ups too it was brutal but I dropped 15 pounds and loaded about another three and a half to five of muscle. I feel good and I don't feel 34 going on 35. 
so it, 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 it's what you were saying is it takes work to get to where you want to be, to get through the dark times. Like for you, it's running for other people. You like, like you said, it might be being in the gym. It might be working. It might be reading. It might be writing, it might be music, whatever it is, but put in the work to it because that's what really, that's how it really happens. Would you agree? Yeah, I think uh, for me, I get very like black and white, very uh, all or nothing. So right. like if I'm going to start eating better, it's like, well, uh, I'm going to have to like avoid all white things and don't have sugar, don't have flour and don't have cream in my coffee. Uh, and it turns out uh, that is bad uh, because then it's like, well, I did this at 9 a.m. and the whole day's fucked. So I may as well eat like a pig. Um, so I've, I've learned that, um, uh, to take it pretty easy on myself and, um, there's definitely I call, like reverse stock exchange, right? So like when you're losing weight, like easy to lose those first five, maybe even five to 10, depending on how big you were to begin with. Um, and then right. there's, and then there's plateau, right? And then. Mm -hmm. And then there's frustration of like, oh, fuck, well, maybe I'll just kind of do a few cheat meals so that's a little up, but struggle through that and then kind of back down. So I'm that's where I am now, kind of, you know, on the other side. I was feeling pretty frustrated. Um, and so I, I did probably have like a couple cereal bowls at night. And when you do that a few nights in a row, uh, it adds a couple pounds back up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely uh, work to be done, but totally like, take it easy on yourself, like be gentle with yourself. And uh, when it doesn't go perfect, like it's cool. You're just like progress, not perfection is another big sort of 12 step ism. Right. right. Um, you, you said something that uh, remind me of another conversation we had recently where it was, if you don't cut yourself slack, yeah, put it this way. If you don't treat yourself how you want other people to treat you and then then treat themselves, stop being your own worst enemy, right? Because being your own worst enemy is not going to get you anywhere. If you're going to let that other person off with a little bit of slack, you know, oh, man, he's having a rough time. I'm just going to, he had a bad day, right? Give yourself that. Give yourself the ability to have a bad day because it's bound to happen. We're human beings. That so I mean yeah just more to your point on that. All right, so now we talked about the struggle. We talked about what you've done to kind of come through the darkness in your own space. Now let's talk about what's exciting. I want to know what you've got going on right now that you're working on that is exciting to you because for somebody who's struggling, yeah, we can talk about the struggle. Yeah, we can talk about what we did to get out, but they need to see an inevitable build. They need to know that there's something greater that out there than what they're struggling with right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm super excited about a lot of stuff. You know how I feel. Well, we've got 13 minutes or so. So I've go. I've, uh, how I feel physically is I can, I can tell you, you know, when you talk about best shape of your life, I, I would say that, as a 46 and a half year old dude, I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life in many, many aspects. Um, you know, I, on a, on a average month, you know, I run, uh, let's say 20 to 25 miles a week on a regular week and like in the thirties on a, on a, on a bigger week where I've got some long miles. Um, wow. uh, I've got an event coming up called, uh, it's called 2929. Do you know who Jesse Itzler is? I know the name. So real quick, he's a billionaire. He invented one of the first, um, he basically created like Uber for jets before there was even an Uber. Like, hey, you're not a billionaire, but you kind of want to live that baller life. So rent, rent jets by the hour. So he invented right. that 20 years, 30 years ago, became rich off that then invented fucking coconut water and got rich off that. Then he married Sarah Blakely, the Spanx lady. So they're billionaires together. They co-own the fucking Hawks, the Atlanta Hawks. So he created this super cool event uh, called 2929, which is the height of Everest, right? 
Right. People people have Everest as a bucket list. It costs twenty nine thousand twenty nine feet. Yes, it costs thousands of dollars. It's months out of your lives. And he's like, "What if we create an event where we can like bring the mountain to you?" So he picked this mountain in Vermont. You go up it seventeen times, and you'll hit your twenty nine. So he created this weekend. It's glamping. It's speakers. It's this fucking like baller cool thing, and it's an adventure. Yada yada. So what I've wanted to do, the you know my business is is this obstacle wacky obstacle stuff. I'll give a quick plug for. Can you see this? Yeah. So this a is a doc, this is a documentary called Rise of the Suffer Fest. It's available on Amazon. It's not quite available on Netflix. If you have some sort of show notes, you can throw it in there. Rise of the Suffer Fest. Oh. Um, Give me the link and I'll definitely add it down. Sure. Below. So I've been creating content for my own company about this stuff for a long time. And I thought, well, why can't I be one of these guys that when you read Runner's World and it's, hey, so-and-so went to Iceland and covered this crazy race. And like somebody gets paid to like write that article and shoot those pictures. And I'm like, well, that, I could do that. Right. So I started reaching out to these magazines. And so I'm going to go on that trip and do this badass event, which I couldn't afford, which costs fucking four grand and, and has already sold out and get paid to create some content around it. And that's the direction I'm taking my life now because um, I can only do so many obstacle races and I want to expand my life. Right. Right. Um, and uh, I started a second podcast called the Atlanta podcast where I interview anyone in my town, basically some of them were famous. Some of them are not famous. Some of them are just There's people. That people I in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, and well, the sub the subtitle of the show is the famous Atlanta famous infamous and anyone else I find interesting. So if you came to town, I can interview you and yes. put it up, right? Right. So um, and I want to create and I'm I've had some cool meetings around with people at that where we do some cool collabs and I'm I'm just figuring out how I can. You know, I started the show really awkwardly talking about trying to get paid for what I do and what I like doing. Um, I I made three podcasts yesterday and scheduled one. I put out two yesterday and scheduled one for tomorrow. I'm I never do that. That like it's a total four hour work week thing of batching that I never do. And I'm right. thrilled that I'm gonna wake up in the morning and this thing's gonna be up because I already did it. And then today I made a fucking three minute video um, about you know this event coming, this other event coming up and. I just like doing it. I mean, I really like, and, and video is this thing that I was never going to do. I'm like, I can't do it. I got to hire some fucking millennial to make videos for me. I know how to do podcasts. It's super easy, but I can't make videos. And I had to take my own medicine, which is um, that I've told a thousand people who asked me about podcasting because I've been podcasting since 2012. You don't need the best equipment. Who cares? Just fucking put it out and do it. Microphone. Right? This is my microphone. Exactly. Exactly. But I couldn't take my own medicine, right? And it's going to suck at first and it's going to take you way longer than you want. But then the second video will take this longer. And then the third, right? Well, so I mean, I'm just, I'm just enjoying that stuff. I'm digging it. I hear you on the video thing. Three, four years ago, you wouldn't have caught me dead doing video. Now, <laughs> I've done over 200 videos. Because, because you were shy or you didn't feel like editing or oh, I was nervous I was shy as hell you wouldn't have put me on stage and now I speak in front of people speak in front of big rooms of people like my life completely flipped so yeah that's what I'm up to now and I'm and I'm nice. and I'm enjoying it I'm I'm enjoying making stuff and uh it's been fun I'm glad to hear that. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you via social, via whatever, what's the best platform for people to get a hold of you on? So I am Matt B. Davis on all of the platforms. Uh, all of the platforms, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Well, super, super, super easy to find me. Uh, and the, the website, the obstacle stuff is at obstacleracingmedia.com. Um, you can also just send me an email on any of those. So Facebook and IG are kind of the best ways to catch me, right? Nice. Matt B. Davis on Facebook or uh, Instagram. I'm very happy that I snagged my name before it was snagged because it would be really hard to get those names today. I'd be mean, Matt B. Davis underscore 20713. Which, by the way, fucking, I just checked my Comcast. I had an issue with Xfinity and they were right. like, 
and they were like log in and I had to like log into my TV for something and I had to like go and have them reset my password and that, they gave me one of those. They gave me Matt underscore Davis 675. Like they gave me one of those like defaults <laughs> as if it's 1997. <coughs> like who is ever going to fucking use that? I have no idea, my man. Uh, so obviously, I'm going to include every, all of your information down in the links um, below. Uh, this video and the audio version of this episode will be up on the audio or the audio version will be up Sunday. The video version will live forever here in Facebook world, as well as on YouTube starting Sunday. Are so, you are you on iTunes or no? Yeah, we're everywhere, baby. All right, I gotta start. I gotta fucking subscribe to you, bro. I iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, all that fun stuff. How are you? How are you? Are you doing anything with Anchor? I messed with it a couple years ago and then never did. I'm totally on Anchor, which leads me to my next part. I love talking about this because, so you guys know that I'm really, really big on supporting mental health. I created a show that is taking countless hours out of my busy life. <laughs> because I'm that focused around mental health. I create a lot of content in my own platforms because it's that important to me. So that being said, the show is only one way that we're gonna help change the world. This is only one way that we're gonna break the stigma. The second way is to support the organizations who are boots on the ground in cities, in communities around the world who are really doing the work. They're helping people on a daily basis that are struggling, that are suicidal that are that don't know what's next for them there are people every single day that are doing that amazing work and i want to support them now the way that we're going to do that is through anchor the audio version of this podcast they've started this new feature where you can support the creator kind of like patreon right you subscribe for 199 a month 10 999 a month whatever it is and you get Obviously, you get access to all the content, but what I'm going to be doing with every single cent that comes in through that version or anybody else that brings in, wants to do anything monetarily into the show, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to donate it to mental health organizations around the world. So that being said, Matt, if people from your circle join on and anchor and, and want to do it, cool, money's going right to mental health organizations in Atlanta to help people in your city because that's that, that's it's needed and I I don't want money from this I've already kind of made it clear I don't want money from this um and what's also really exciting and and I'm, I'm doing this with this this organization because they're really really awesome and I want to give them airwaves and attention um there's this organization out of Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, that I've I'm, I'm been doing some work with. You might recognize the name because the co-founder of the organization was on an uh, episode a couple of weeks ago. The organization is an organization called Aero, A-I-R-O. They call themselves Aero Mental Health. What they've created is a wearable piece of technology that tracks your mental health. So you wear it for 10 days. And after those 10 days, it has analyzed your triggers. And between the communication on the device and in the app, you'll actually get notifications to when, to when you're within a certain percentage of that stressor or that anxiety moment or that thing that, that causes your body to shift. It's really cool technology, and I'm excited to say that it's going to be launching here in the U.S. very, very soon. In the meantime, if you are interested – Definitely check Arrow out. Uh, I'm supporting them. I'm saying that they're a sponsor of the show without even taking anything of it, other than they're sending me one of the wearables so that I can create content specific. I, ju I just I just checked it. It's getarrow.com. G E T A I R O. There you go. Com. Boom. Um, it's a really incredible thing, and I definitely feel the community coming together to to maybe one day where we can seriously stop suicide. We can stop these struggles. I know it's possible. We just all need to work together at it. So that being said, I have a way that I end the show every single time without fail because 
it makes sense. It's a little mantra to repeat um, in your own heads on a daily basis as I, as I do in mine every single day. So it's, it is as follows. Be happy, have fun, and hustle your fucking ass off. But remember, there is no amount of hustle on the face of this planet that can bring you happiness or fun. So you have to have those two first. And you got to find time to breathe. Because I know we're head down, we're working, we're doing a lot of things on a daily basis. And we, we do, oftentimes don't take the time that is needed to breathe. It's really important. That's why it's my favorite word in the world. And I'm about to find a place to get it tattooed on me because it's that important to me. Um, even if you just force yourself to say the word breathe once a day, you actually breathe. It's a really cool thing. Um, so that being said, Matt, my brother, I want to say thank you. I'm glad we were able to finally make this happen. It's only been a few months. And um, if you ever find yourself up Chicago way, you got a place to, you got a place to crash. Um, and I'm actually hoping that I can make a trip down to your way before the end of the year. So definitely we'll go to, we'll go to Waffle House. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Although I can't eat carbs. You, you can have a lot of things without carbs. There. Egg, egg, eggs and bacon. All right. We're good. But awesome, brother. Well, you enjoy the rest of your night with your family. Thank you for taking the time out of your night. I know you're not a late night guy. And, uh, but this means the world to me. So thank you, brother. And then anything you want the world to know, say it now. Yeah, man. Drop me a note if you have any uh, questions about any of this stuff, because I know it's not something people talk about. And like I said, that I'd, I haven't said out loud on a podcast before. And uh, if you like obstacle racing stuff, check out Obstacle Racing Media. And if you like good interviews, uh, I talk to people uh, on the Atlanta podcast. So check it out. Awesome, guys. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys on Friday. All right, man. I'll send you a link.